you have been asking about how to safely bike with your dog using the Springer. Many of you have seen my other videos where we use the Springer. I thought I would make kind of an introductory video giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to actually use the Springer. For those of you that don't know, this is a Springer. It attaches underneath your bike seat. There's a bunch of bolts here. There's a little cotter pin here to keep this. This can come out so this whole arm can come off. And then there's this big arm with a big spring on it. And what the spring does is it, notice how I can pull it and my bike doesn't really move all that much. This spring absorbs the majority of the pull. And then this is where you attach your dog. Now what you guys are gonna notice right away, normally the Springer comes with a safety clip. I have modified my clip. I wouldn't advise modifying your clip until after you have ridden and your, your dog has really learned how to bike with the Springer. Um, what it is, the clip that comes with it is a safety clip and what happens is if you fall or if your dog pulls the wrong way, this clip right here will actually break free so that your dog comes loose from your bike. In case, in case you fall, you don't want to get hurt, you don't want to fall on top of your dog. So that's actually what that's for. Um, like I said, I actually modified that once my dog figured out how to bike with me because I don't want her to break free from the bike. <laughs> I don't advise doing that unless you really are comfortable with biking with your dog. So that's the first thing you're going to need. Other things that are good to have when biking with your dog. Musher's secret. I put this on Shiloh and Shelby's paws every time we go out biking. All it is is like a almost like a petroleum jelly. It smells really good, but it keeps their feet nice and soft, keeps their pads protected so that, because if they're running on cement, this can hurt after a while. I always bring a water bowl and water, because, you know, you gotta give them water. If you're having them run, or I mean, even just for walking and it's warm, you gotta make sure that they stay hydrated. Gotta have a harness. This is an urban mushing harness. I'll show you what it looks like when I put it on Shelby. I got this from alpineoutfitters.net. Um, there's also gonna be links down in the description down below to where you can buy a Springer, where you can buy these harnesses. This is a um, custom fitted harness. I have one for Shiloh and Shelby. And then this, I always have a four foot leash when I bike. And the reason you, I use a four foot leash is because it gives, I can hook this to Shelby's collar or Shiloh's collar this is actually Shelby's leash, um, and it gives me enough play where if something did happen to the Springer, if for some reason this broke and came loose, or if the harness broke and came loose, I would still have a hold of Shelby. And the four foot leash makes it so it's not too long where it's gonna get tangled in her feet, and it's not gonna get tangled in the bike. Now you guys know Shelby already knows how to bike with this, but I'm gonna kinda show you what I did the first time she ever got introduced to the Springer. The very first time, I kind of just brought her out into the garage, stood by the bike, and I would, you know, grab the spring, move it. You know, I usually kept treats with me, and if she didn't react, I gave her a treat. And we'd kind of just walk around the bike, you know, get close to it, you know, make it make noise. If she reacted badly, we'd just walk away, wait a minute or two, and then come back to it. Because you don't want your dog to be afraid of any of the noises that the bike's going to make. Like I said, Shelby already knows what the bike is, but that was what I did the first few times to get her used to the idea of this thing that made noise. The very first time we rode together, and I did the same thing with Shiloh too, when I would hook the dog up to the bike, we would only go for about a block, maybe two, and then we'd come back and she'd get lots of praise and lots of treats. And then, you know, a little bit later in the day or the next day, we'd do that again. You really want to start slow and in the beginning, you don't necessarily have to give your dog a whole lot of commands the first few times you go out. You're more or less getting the dog used to being hooked up to the bike, not afraid of the bike, and getting the dog to learn that this can be a very fun thing. As you'll see, Shelby has her harness on. Never, ever, ever bike with your dog hooked up to their collar like this because you're putting all the dog's pulling power right at their neck, and I don't think they'll like that. Um, these harnesses make it so that more of the pulling power is in their chest and their front. When I hook my Springer up, I usually hook it up on a side D-ring. Basically because the dog is off to the side of the bike, 
If you hook it on the back D-ring, what tends to happen as the dog runs is this harness will shift. And you can see Shelby already doesn't really like that. It kind of becomes uncomfortable for the dog because this piece underneath here that you can see is now going into her leg. So it's not really something you want to have happen. So if you get one of these harnesses, it's best to hook up to the D-ring on the side. These back D-rings are more for if you're bike joring um, or if you're rollerblading, if you have the guts to do that with your dog. We don't have the guts to do that with our dogs. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> A lot of you have asked me about commands when biking with the dog. Um, I, because you guys, most of you guys know that I do kick sled and things like that with the dog. I use a lot of the same commands, which will pretty much work for anybody. When I want to turn to the right, it's G. When I want to turn to the left, it's HA. Um, if there's another dog or there's something I don't want Shelby to be paying attention to, if there's a, a dog or a squirrel, the command I use is on by. And you just say it over and over and over. On by, on by, on by. You know, good girl. And that way, basically what you're doing is you're breaking her or his focus for whatever they're focusing on. Um, on by is a very good command for getting past just about anything. If there's a person or a dog and you don't want your dog to stop and you want your dog to continue. And they'll get it after a while. Um, you can even use on by when walking. Um, if you want to practice it like that, you know, as you're walking, if your dog starts to break focus on walking, just, you know, pull them a little bit. Come on, on by, on by, and keep walking. As for stopping, when you go to pull the brakes on your bike, the dog is going to feel the pull in their harness as you start to slow down and this starts to slow back. I always just tell her, whoa. I mean, that's, that's a big thing. And, you know, I also, I wouldn't bike with your dog if your dog doesn't know basic commands, sit, stay, heel. Um, because I use, when we come to a full stop and we're stopped at a stoplight, we're stopped at a stop sign, I make Shelby sit and I make her wait. She knows the wait command pretty good. Um, so I make her sit, I make her wait, you know, things like that. You know, it just you got to be thinking about the safety of your dog, thinking about the safety of the people around you. You don't want your dog to get hurt. You don't want to get hurt. Um, and I will tell you, I'm not saying that this is that you'll never fall using this because we fell one time, <laughs> but it was my fault. I wasn't paying attention to the dog. I was looking the other way, and I fell. Like I was saying, when you hook the dog up, you want to hook it up on um, that side D-ring. Shelby's like, we can't go this way. The back of the garage is this way. Make sure you hook your dog up. Don't let him go. And I always leave the leash on the dog. And you'll notice, Shelby can get about... I know. She's like, what's he doing? Shelby can get about a couple, maybe a foot away from the bike. When she comes forward... Come forward, Shelby. Come forward. Come here. That's about as far forward as she'll ever get while we're biking. And if you notice, she can't really run in front of the tire. The biggest thing you have to watch is when you turn this way. But did you notice what she did as soon as I turned the tire? She moved away from it. <laughs> yeah, most dogs aren't dumb. They're gonna move. But you know, when you turn, you can always give your turn commands, you know, hard, G. And just pay attention. Before you go to turn your bike, look down and see where your dog is. Because if you're looking this way and the dog's on this side of you and you turn, you could run your dog over. So you really have to pay attention. It's not just something easy. You can just go out and bike with your dog. It's still a lot of work and there is training involved in it. Um, I had somebody ask me if the dog's ever tried to run under here. Not really, but she doesn't really fit. And when your feet are here and they're going around, they don't really want to once, run that way. Once they get in run mode, they're they're in run mode. One one thing you will notice when uh, you take them out running is that uh, you'll be on the brake a lot. Yes. And uh, you should have actually keep an eye on your brakes because hers are actually pretty worn. There's not much pad left on these brakes. <laughs> <laughs> and she can run about 20... So can run 22 miles an hour. About 22 miles an hour. That's another too you don't necessarily want to go full speed first thing take it slow like I said before take it slow and even when Shelby does go 22 miles an hour it's pretty much when we're on a straightaway I know there's no crossroads I know there's no cars there's no other people and we do that for five minutes and then we slow down you don't yeah, want to overwork your dog yeah and, and if you start out fast and let them just run full speed uh, 
it's just like a human when they exercise, you know, they'll they'll pull muscles and they won't be able to run as far, so it's don't just don't want to hurt your dog. It's yeah. supposed to be fun. Just start slow and and it can be a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And a lot of good exercise. And you can actually get this uh this what do they call that again? Springer. Springer, thank you. You can get a springer for both sides. Yes. So you could actually have two doggies pulling. You can hook up one dog to each side. Um, it's nice on wider trails. You can also hook up two dogs to one side, which depending on the size of your dog, sometimes is a little bit easier than one on each side. Because one on each side, you know, like I said, you will feel a little bit of this pull. But even you can see now, there's nobody on the bike and it's barely moving. Now, if I was sitting on this bike, you wouldn't see as much of that movement. All right, let's show them what happens. Okay. Oh, and a good command for go is hike. Shelby knows how to hike, okay? But look for cars. Ready, Shelby? Ready, Shelby, hike! Hike, 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 hike! Yay. Yay. She did pretty good. I mean, as soon as you started running, she was looking forward, ears were up, and... Mm -hmm. She's ready to go. Ready to go. And see how she is? She's pulling a good distance away right now, too. And they'll they'll kind of do that throughout yeah. the whole run. Most dogs don't want to be right next to your bike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're not stupid. Well, this one's not. <laughs>